beautiful. The art of guilloche or guilloche, I'm gonna call it guilloche, <laughs> is a mesmerizing engraving technique which I always wanted to get my toes wet. Uh, is that the right saying? Anyway, so I thought that looks pretty similar to the kid's toy, the Spirograph, which I ordered online and uh, I can use that on my pantograph to find out if I can get some similar results. Cool, I think we're good to go. What did I expect by doing this? I mean, on wood it doesn't look amazing, right? And it's also MDF, so it looks terrible. Proof of concept, it works. It's uh, obviously janky as well, so um, that's not gonna cut it. And also, it's not gonna cut it. Obviously, the toy is not rigid enough, so let's try to make our own version which is much more fitted to the pantograph. I'm gonna add a handle and to prevent from the gear flying away everywhere, I'm gonna put a backing plate as well. Now there's lots of gears and prototyping in this video. So because of that, I decided to get a laser cutter. This one is the Xtool S1. I'm not sponsored by them, but they did send it to me for free. So if you want to check them out, the link is below. Laser cutter is on the floor because it's big. Uh, maybe it will go inside there. I, need, I don't have a place for, for, <laughs> for it in the shop. Anyway, uh, it's connected to the computer. Uh, so let's try to do some test cuts. Yes, sir. Please. <laughs> okay, I did not know this before, but do not cut acrylic with the backing plate. Uh, that will ruin your parts, so uh, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> That's one nice pigeon. Okay, so it's time to cut the actual spirograph and uh, let's see if it works any better. I'm not in love with all the plastic wood kind of stuff, especially this green. But before I do anything out of brass, it's actually pretty nice to do some prototyping. I, I'm kind of stupid. I didn't think the gear ratios matter. Well, of course they matter, but uh, I thought, ah, an e nice even what is it, one to five, something like that. Uh, just gives you a very, very boring uh, shape. Uh, so I need a slightly more offset gear ratio, that one that uh, only comes back after like 14 revolutions, 17, 20, I don't know. So yeah, I think we can do better than that. But first, milk is 90% water. That's a very underwhelming fact. Here's more underwhelming facts. That's how I edit my videos. Wait, why am I animating this? This is my setup. My back hurts. But seriously, my back is really killing me. So thanks to FlexiSpot, I can now build my ultimate gaming setup. And by that, I mean billiard table. Okay, now seriously, let's make a gaming setup. And by that I mean making a big game on board. Tiny pigeons. Tiny pigeons. I 
didn't make all the pieces, but you get the gist of it. So thanks again to Flexisport for supporting this video. Sorry, I have cats. They provide a variety of premium standing desks such as the E7 and the E7 Pro, as well as the E5, which is more budget friendly. The E5Q is the equivalent E7 Plus in the US website. They also have some walking treadmills if you want to keep your shape while you're editing uh, the YouTube content. I'm very happy with their desk and I highly recommend you check it out. You'd find an exclusive promo code in the description down below and use the Flexispot link to find out more. And now back to the video. Yes! That looks cool. <laughs> so I made this one thinking it will be just for fun, just to see how it will perform when it's slightly more fitted to the pantograph. I was actually shocked that it gave such a good result. Uh, this is pretty incredible. I still don't like that the movement is kind of janky. I'm physically pushing everything with my hand. Uh, there's lots of human error. Why am I doing it? Why am I doing quotation marks? It's it's my human error. <laughs> Anyways, I think we are ready to go for version three, four. This design here will give me so much more options and will make the mechanism much more rigid. Unfortunately, I cannot steal the entire design because it's not gonna work on the pantograph. Since the turntable is on the mechanism itself, we would essentially need to rotate the whole entire mechanism. So I came up with this design that should hopefully solve that issue and basically make a mechanism on top of it another mechanism. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. I like birds. What? Eh, uh, sorry. Oh my god, it's garbage. I mean, it's not garbage, it's just still janky. Uh, we need to try this again.
This time we're gonna give it a crank so it's easier to handle as well as rigidify everything, it's still not solid enough. Not all the pieces work with plastics, so I decided to make a few of them out of brass. Ignore the eye, please, <laughs> and ignore the zeros, they're upside down, like I always do, but it's part of my uh, shitty charm, I guess, <laughs> maybe not. Woo. I don't show all of it, but there were lots of trials and error trying to figure out the right settings to use this new tool. Yeah, so it took quite a long time until I found a setting that looks nice, it's not as straightforward as it looks, but uh, once I understood the math and the idea behind it, uh, I can get some really, really nice results. Yes, there are toolbox, or a real goulosh or a rose engine is more like a lathe than a, a milling machine. So the tool marks are kind of like engraved, so they are much nicer finishes, uh, which I have an idea that I might replicate this to be more like a guillotine to be its own thing. Let me know if you want to see this kind of video where I try to, uh, yeah, make a guillotine. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for watching. As always, thanks to the Patreons. You're my bread and butter. Is that the right saying? You're my bread and butter. You provide me bread and butter. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next. Uh, yeah, episode, a video. Oh, I'm balding, eh? Whoops. And uh, never mind. Lots of thanks to Flexispot for supporting this video. Check them out in the link below if you are interested. <laughs>